Hey there and welcome to No Recipe Required. I'm Dave and today we're going to do a, a bolognese sauce. A, um, I was going to say a beef bolognese but mine is actually beef and pork. By all means I think uh, you can add in veal as well, um, all ground meat. Um, we're going to cook it long and slow with um, just a little bit of tomatoes, a little bit of cream, some spices in there, some carrots, some onions, some celery. But this is primarily just kind of a rich, slow-cooked meat sauce that is absolutely spectacular. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to find some pasta. I think I've got some uh, pappardelle. Um, we'll cook that off, throw it in the end, and have a, a beautiful uh, pappardelle bolognese. I mean, perfect for the winter. Hearty, so yummy. It's going to be absolutely delicious. Give it a try. Let me know how it goes. Leave me a comment, and uh, let's go ahead and get to it. All right, we're going to start our bolognese with pork and with ground beef. I'm going to pull these little wrappers out of there. I'm using a ratio of about 50-50 um, and this is two pounds beef, two pounds pork. I'm going to cook this off first because it's going to release a bunch of fat that I don't want in the finished sauce. So we'll drain it once we get um, once we get this all cooked down. This will probably take about 20 to 30 minutes to cook all the beef or all the pork and you want to just move it around every once in a while and get it fully cooked through. All right, so our meat is cooking, and we're going to do our aromatics now, our veggies. Carrots, onions, and celery, comedically. I forgot to buy the uh, onions at the store, but fortunately I had some baby carrots here. I'm going to throw about a cup's worth in there. I've got one onion chopped up here, and then about uh, four stalks of celery. I've got one more onion I'm going to toss in there as well. Now, you don't have to do this in the food processor, obviously. You can chop this stuff up. We're going to do this in two batches, I see, because I'm running a little low on space. But the food processor gets it nice and fine, um, and it's really easy, really easy to do. In a stew, in a stew bolognese like this, doesn't really matter. If you do it by hand, it would take quite a bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and pulse this. You'll see it gets uh, reduced down pretty quickly. We do a couple pulses. Pulse, pulse. You may have to go in there, kind of move things around a little bit. And then we're going to come back, we'll add the remaining bits of onion as we go. Alright guys, so a little bit of spatula work on there, moving things around. He's going to get it all kind of finely chopped, which is what you're looking for. You're not really looking for soup, which is why I pulse it. So this is, uh, this is good to go. This is going to make a base of our uh, vegetables in our sauce. I'm going to go ahead and finish our meat and then we're going to start cooking this off. Okay, so let's show you the easiest way to get the, um, the fat out of the meat that we just cooked. This is a, um, you know, it's a common technique. You cook a whole bunch of meat, you got a whole bunch of fat laying down in there. So, easiest thing to do, take the lid of the pot, put it just askew so there's a little gap there. Get a nice big bowl, something they can't miss with. As you grab the handle, use your thumbs to hold on to the lid and then just tip and the meat's going to get captured by the lid there and we drain out all that fat give it a little shake and that gets just about everything out of there really easy to do then you can um, you know you can dispose of the fat in your preferred method and we're good to go now I'm going to take this meat out and um, we'll cook our vegetables Okay, so we got our meat drained out. We got a dry pan and I've got a bunch of pancetta here. I'm gonna add this back over low heat and just let this slowly render out. The pancetta, you can see it's not a ton of meat. This is a, it's like an Italian bacon and it's gonna add quite a bit of flavor. But to capture that flavor, we wanna render it out and just do that over low heat so it doesn't burn. Okay, so we've got our pancetta now rendered out and there's a decent amount of um, fat from the pancetta in the pan, which is what we want. We're going to leave that fat in there because it's got a tremendous amount of flavor. We're also going to add a touch of olive oil because it's not quite enough for all of the veggies that we've done. And you can see here, the way we did them, there's going to be a lot of water that comes out, but that's perfectly fine. That water is going to evaporate out. I'm just going to get all these guys in there. We'll come back and scrape the bowl nice and clean. Remember this is our garlic and onion, carrot and celery in there. And just like if you they were whole vegetables, oh, if you see a big piece like this that we didn't get quite chopped up, don't worry about it. It'll be just fine. 
Um, throw it in there. I'm going to let these cook for about 15-20 minutes or so. Just like if they were whole, I'm going to let the um, veggies get translucent. Same thing here. Um, we're just going to cook them down. Going to reduce about half in size. And we haven't had it any salt yet. This is a great time to hit it with our first few pinches and our first few pinches of pepper. Really important to season along the way. And we just want to make sure we don't scorch or burn the bottom. So we're going to watch the heat, probably medium to medium low heat. All right, so our veggies now have cooked down. And I'm going to add some tomato paste. I'm actually going to turn the heat up a little bit, get a good medium. Um, and we're going to cook down this tomato paste. There's a debate how much tomato goes into a bolognese. For me, it's um, for the size we're making here. Again, this is like four pounds of meat. Um, one can of um, tomato paste like this, and then probably one more can of um, canned whole tomatoes. Key here is to let this, um, let this paste get into the bottom of the pan there and kind of cook down. It's going to change color. It's going to develop a different flavor profile than the, um, than the raw tomato. And you want to do this before you add any of our other liquids. This will take about, um, again, another 15-20 minutes or so. You just want to see a little bit of sticking to the bottom of the pan, but you got to be careful not to burn it. Alright, so our tomatoes are now cooked down. I'm going to add about a cup of dry white wine. Don't use cooking wine, it is crapola. I'm just going to let this evaporate, let some of that alcohol burn off. Then we're going to come back and add our meat back. Um, and a little bit more tomato. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add our meat back. This is where we drain the fat out. We're gonna be nice and careful. We're gonna get it in the, uh, in the pan. And then I've got some tomatoes. This is a can, like a 16 ounce can of whole tomatoes that I've just crushed in my hand and uh, mixed up. And I'm gonna stir this into our, um, into our meat. And I'm also gonna add some chicken stock. Um, this is a full, I guess these are quartz, whatever they are. Um, I'm gonna pour this in with our, um, with our tomatoes stir this all in. You're looking for um, you know, a bit of a loose consistency. If you want to go ahead and add more, it looks like I'm going to need a little bit more chicken stock. You can do that. You can also add a little bit more tomato if you want. I don't like a ton of tomato in my bolognese, but uh, it's up to you really. Alright, so I decided to actually add a little bit more tomato. This is maybe another seven or eight ounces. We're just going to mix it again. Again, kind of tomato to, pay, to, to taste. This is a little more chicken stock. You're looking for a, um, you know, a fairly soupy consistency. You need enough water here that we're going to simmer it away for um, you know, about three hours without it, uh, without it burning. Again, you can't really go wrong. You're just kind of looking for this type of consistency. The other thing I'm going to add before we let it cook is a couple bay leaves here, and we're just going to stir those in. I'm going to put the cover on, let it simmer gently for about three hours. Okay, so I've been cooking the um, bolognese. Uh, covered for quite a while now. It's been about two and a half hours or so. And the two things you're looking for, one, are consistency, and then obviously time is going to uh, blend it together. Consistency you manage by covering. It's going to stay the way it is. Or uncovering, you're going to get some evaporation out of it and it's going to thicken, which is actually what I'm looking for. So I'm going to cook the next couple hours uncovered. And I'm also going to hit it with about a quarter cup of cream which is common in a bolognese sauce. And then I'm also going to add a good you know, pinch of thyme or so. You can add oregano in, a bunch of different spices, all going to be good. This just adds another little element there. You could have also added that thyme in um, ahead of time to, or you know, a couple hours ago before. So I'm just going to mix this all in. I'm going to let it continue to cook for probably another two hours, uncovered. Just barely, lightly simmering and stirring every 20 minutes, half an hour or so. Alright, so we've now cooked for, this has been like a total of five hours or so. You really don't have to pay a whole bunch of attention to it. You just want to make sure it's not boiling because that's going to maybe burn on the bottom. Just a nice little simmer. It's really about getting to the consi consistency that you want it to. And then you want to give it a little bit of taste as well. And this one. Keep in mind, it's my family, so I can taste it. Um, and put the uh, put the spoon back in. This one still needed a little bit of salt. You know, if you if you taste anything like this, and you're like, eh, I'm not sure, seems a little flat. Almost always going to be the amount of salt and pepper. So go ahead and add a little bit to it. I'm also gonna so I'm gonna stir that in. I'm gonna let it you know go. If you're good with the consistency, you let it go for like five minutes. Let that salt settle in, and then you're good. Mine is still a little bit thinner, 
than what I want. So I'm just going to keep going for probably another hour or so. And then, um, and then I think we'll be ready to serve it up. All right, so our sauce is done here. Um, to finish it off and add to the pasta, I like to move it over to a pander because this giant pot, that's like six or seven meals at least for my family. So we're gonna ladle a few spoonfuls over into a, uh, a frying pan here that's on the heat. My pasta is cooked. I'm using uh, some parpadel. We're just gonna take that pasta, drain it, and add it to this sauce. Okay, so we've got our del here, cooked nice and al dente. I like these flat noodles. Fettuccine works really well um, as well. Go ahead, toss it in the pan. We're gonna finish cooking it in the pan here. This gives the sauce a chance to coat that pasta, make it super yummy, just make sure it's well coated. You can throw a little bit of Parmesan cheese before we finish it off. Okay, so we've got our pasta, our bolognese uh, mixed together. We're gonna go ahead and plate this up. I like to get, get a nice heaping pile and lay it with that little twist of the tongs to get some height on it. You know, a little bit of controversy over how much sauce you want. If you want more sauce, go ahead and grab more sauce. Do it to your own taste. If you like less sauce, put less sauce on there. It's up to you. It's your dish. You're eating it. Go ahead and make it the way you want. One thing I like to do, a little Parmesan cheese, grate it on top, fresh. Use the good stuff. It is so much better. Throw that on top. Nice salty nuttiness to it. And then the other thing I do is add a little um, drizzle of olive oil over the top. Again, I just think it makes it all so much more yummy. This is, I think, a perfect bolognese. Give it a try and let me know how it goes. All right, so this bolognese, I absolutely love making it. You know, it does take some time, but make a big pot and you get like 18 meals out of it. Give it a try, let me know how it goes. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, check out these other links. I'll see you next time on No Recipe Required.